So I've been away hiking for four days in the Peak District and the Derbyshire Dales and it's been absolutely glorious and as a result I'm absolutely knackered and lots of driving around and lots of walking but um, I'm pleased to be home and I've just gone around the allotment and given everything a kind of check over as to what he's doing and given everything a good water I'm surprised at how much watering is needed at this time of year um, especially you know when you've got a lot of plants in the ground for overwintering. That's a particularly challenge for me because I've still got a lot of stuff under cover. So what I thought I'd do today is just to do a quick tour around. It's lovely and sunny, there's no wind, just the pile driver on the building site but we'll just have to put up with that. So let's take a look around. So the big news which is now the very boring news if you watch my channel regularly is that uh, the polyton got blight almost every tomato has gone now um, but I got a fantastic harvest off them and we've been harvesting them since about July beginning of July time and you know we just had a huge harvest and even of the ones that were that got blight like this one that I've left in because it's got all of these I've still got masses and masses at home that are ripening away really nicely that I took out and all the ones that I've left on the vine Again, all of those have ripened really well. And so I'm really pleased I didn't panic. It's my first time getting blight. I didn't panic, I didn't take everything out. I let it run its course, just gradually taking things off, leaves off as I needed to, and gradually taking fruit off as it started to ripen. I was pleasantly surprised to find that all the fruit that I took off tasted great. There was no degradation in sweetness or texture or anything like that, it was really good. But it has meant that I've got lots of space left in the polytunnel which I've filled up and I'll show you that in a minute. And fortunately I have got a couple of plants that survived. So these were cuttings that I took and so far they're still okay. There's maybe still a little bit of blight coming on them but maybe I'll get another week or so of tomatoes before I have to switch to shop-bought ones. Shop-bought uh, tomato is one of the few things that we still buy rather than grow ourselves so cucumber still pumping out loads of cucumbers the cucumbers at home are still pumping out loads of cucumbers in the conservatory and the next succession of cucumbers little tiny plants have got their first fruits just showing on them so we should be okay for cucumbers well into sort of october maybe even november so i'm really happy with that this particular plant, which is the only one I've got left now in the polysol out of three, um, this will be coming out middle of October, like pretty much everything else, including all this tatsoi and pak choy that I just planted today, all of this uh, celery, which we've been harvesting as a cut and come again crop since May, these lettuces around here, this spinach here, but not that parsley. That parsley is one of the few things that's going to stay in here. And there's another tomato plant there. Again, hopefully that will ripen up blight free and give us a few tomatoes over the next few weeks. So I'm leaving this one in here as well. This one's still got quite a few tomatoes on it, which is great news. And I've got some a bit floppy carrots in here. This is my last crop of carrots that are going to grow to maturity this year. So I will have some late ones that will go into containers in the polythenol that will be sown in November, but this is the last lot that will grow to maturity. So they'll finish growing, I don't know, October, maybe early November, something like that. By then I generally normally just cut the tops off them, just stack them up and just store them ready for eating in April, which is when we want that particular batch. I've got some uh, ginger here to keep resisting digging it up to see how it's going but uh, it went in really late so I'm not expecting a lot but I am expecting something I'm really excited for that uh, fresh ginger crop and you can use the stems and everything as well when you pick it fresh so this parsley this is all going to be harvested for drying I've got some leeks there and these are last as I said three tomato plants I've got some celeriac in here, no more tomatoes down there 
and then I've got some overwintering onions so these are tough ball and this will be my earliest crop so hopefully I'll be harvesting this one in May and that's where we tend to start running out of stored onions um, and so hopefully this crop will be ready and then we've got lots of other successions which will be eating in June and July and then the main crop of onions in August so let's take a walk onto the plot we'll have a quick look round and we'll turn around and see the carrots if that's what the plot looks like still looking pretty lush quite happy with it at the moment despite the blight so these are my autumn early autumn carrots anyway I've still got some cut summer carrots left over so I'm a bit ahead on carrots got a bit of a glut um, but uh, these are all looking pretty good I've done some test harvests a little bit of mildew on them just they got a bit dry really and that you know when the plants weaken they tend to get a bit of mildew but all the new growth is looking great so yeah I've, as i say i've test harvested these these are already really now so we'll be picking those over the next month and a half and yeah let's look, look at the other carrots so these are the carrots for late autumn and winter and these are Touchon. again i've had a look at them they're looking great so pleased with the carrots this year so once we finish those we move down here and these are the late winter and early spring carrots and then we eat those ones that you just saw in the polytunnel and then these are the winter salad carrots so i really love the sweetness of a winter carrot so we've got loads of those as well so i'm really really happy as i said with the carrots this year look at the peppers these are the chili peppers i thought we'd finished with them to be honest we've got loads of them harvested already i just left these outside just to die and look at them There's loads more come on them so and they're all ripening off really beautifully so that's just like a huge bonus i didn't really don't really need them but it's nice to have spares i've got four of these little low tunnels with sweet peppers in them and i am on to my second harvest of these so all of the flowers that flowered sort of april and may time those, those have all been harvested we've harvested a few hundred um, peppers probably in total and now we've got the second harvest coming and it's huge <laughs> so so many green peppers on here so there's no way we're going to harvest all of these um, ripe so i am starting to take a few of these green peppers now um, but yeah they're just looking really great so i'm really pleased with those quite a few of them are breaking off like those down here and that tends to trigger me obviously to harvest some green peppers but this gives you an idea of the sort of yield that we're talking about just off one little branch on one plant out of 48 plants they're not all small ones this is a great example of a plant that's got really nice big ones let's give you an idea how big my hand is there and so there's not that many on there there's probably one two three four five six i think six there's another one down there look six not too bad this one bit smaller but a few more there's another one there really nice sizes some of them just starting to ripen up and as i say i've already taken one whole crop off these plants which is really encouraging i really do recommend that you don't take the flowers off your peppers in april and may and leave them on just put your plants in bigger pots so that you get a nice early harvest as well as the second harvest so when we did the tour last month i think this bed was just dripping with huge yellow sweet peppers and now there's a whole new crop of new green ones these are young long yellow ringo and they've just been fantastic such a great yield off them 
and as I said now we're onto the second cropping. So this is how these low tunnels normally look, tops closed, so the tops where the peppers actually are is really warm and really humid and the bottom is really well ventilated and actually quite well shaded as well the soil and I give them 20 litres of water a week. 10 litres has feed in it and 10 litres is just, just ordinary fresh water which washes the feed down into the soil. So this bed sweet corn interplanted with crown print squash. I think it's about 10 or 11 really big crown princes in this bed and maybe just a few small ones as well and I think we've probably had about 20 sweet corn probably got about another 30 maybe more to go so that this bed's been a great success and it it's just my favorite thing to look at as I come onto the plot it just looks really beautiful well to my eyes anyway and then down here We've got uh, Brussels sprouts, a mix of greens and reds. And we love Brussels sprout leaves. They're just so tender. Just look at that leaf, gorgeous. Little tiny bit of white fly on them, it's not a problem. These are the red leaves. Again, absolutely so tender, so healthy, so pretty. What more could you ask for? And then of course, after the leaf harvest, then we actually get the sprouts. The red ones are useful because again, not only are they really beautiful to look at, but the sprouts actually come later on in the year. So you get a bit of a successional harvest, green ones first, red ones later. They do tend to be a bit smaller, but worth having. Underplanted down here with leeks. They're thickening up nicely. And as I take these lower leaves off the bustles, which I'll be doing in a few days time, these leeks will get full sun again and uh, they'll really grow on strongly then. Look further down here we've got the collets. Again these are under, underplanted with leeks and these are just like those beautiful sprout plants. Again an amazing leaf. A little bit of a problem on this, just this one plant with cabbage aphid you have to keep your eyes open for it at this point i'm not treating it it's only on this one plant i'm just pulling the leaves off and throwing them in the compost and yeah it's just they're such beautiful plants my favorite plant overall just such a versatile plant so tasty so healthy so prolific looks really nice on the plot not as many problems as some of the other brassicas as i said just a little bit of white fly look not much and then down there we've got some more so this half of the bed are bustle sprouts again and maybe you can see actually that can you see the progress on those bustles they're just starting to form whereas on the red ones there's very little sign really of, of growth on those but what there is on these plants is all of this fungal growth on the lower leaves so i'll be taking these lower leaves off and that's just the way i control it it seems fine doesn't seem to damage the growth of the plants they're big plants now they don't need a huge amount of leaf area to bring those sprouts to maturity and down here we've got purple sprouting broccoli loads and loads of purple sprouting broccoli this year um, multiple varieties to get a nice successional harvest it's all looking pretty good there's a lot of plants in this bed and as a result not great airflow so i am taking the leaves off regularly especially leaves with this fungal infection but they're doing pretty well they look pretty healthy pretty confident in them we go down here and we've got my babies here so these are baby sprout plants uh, reflex curly kale 
and the Carvalho Nero, Tuscan Kales down there, all interplanted with these little turnips. And these are all for a leaf harvest. So these sprouts will not mature and I don't want them to because I say I just want them for the leaves and because these are so late planted these won't go to seed as early in spring and so these will just be finishing just as my early kales and early sprouts are ready for a leaf harvest in May so I get a nice seamless succession and then down here just to finish off on the brassicas we've got more purple sprouting broccoli and again this is all looking really nice just need to keep on top of it taking off the lower leaves so everything doesn't get too um diseasy <laughs> if that's a word no it's not a word so the courgettes in these big planters are still doing great and I'm kind of struggling to believe that they are doing so well actually because it's uh, you know I've never had such a good experience with them in containers but both of the plants are the same that's a yellow one and this is a green one I think just from these two I think we must have had about 80 courgettes or something like that some incredible number since the last tour I've taken out the New Zealand spinach that was in here and put spring onions in there and then I've got some leeks tiny little leeks that were interplanted underneath these collets I didn't quite appreciate the amount of shade from this tree I think the combination of the collets and the tree meant that those leeks were really struggling to thrive on this side here so I've moved them into here and they're really doing great so I think I'm going to get a decent leek harvest from there I've got some radishes in here I've got some spring onions in here uh, I've got some carrots which will not get to any decent size now that was just an experiment to see how late I could sow them I just don't think I can sow them in August and get a crop with this amount of shade spinach here the spinach well, in fact most of this bed will come out and be replanted with field beans in the fullness of time and this bed actually will also when it comes out be replanted with uh, garlic field beans and onions and then down here I've got my storage crop of beetroot and these are the ones that we let grow really big these are very young plants, so they're not woody at all, even though they're large. So really nice size there. But uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how big they are really. The woodiness seems to develop over time. So provided I take these out, sort of middle of September, early October, that sort of time frame, they won't be woody, even though they're huge, perfect for storage. I store mine in damp wood chips. So I've got to make three different varieties down here. And I think I'm almost done. These strawberries are almost finished now. So I should be taking those out. Not taking them out, taking the tops off fairly soon. These are an everbearing, so a late variety. Uh, they don't really produce any runners. Um, it's not so important that you take the tops off, but I do it because I find you just get disease with that much top growth. Uh, it all starts rotting down on top of the crowns. I much prefer just to take it off and makes it easier to put a bit of mulch down uh, for next year. And then asparagus, yeah, it's doing great. I underplant this with spring onions in sort of March time and get a great harvest of spring onions from in between the asparagus whilst I'm actively harvesting it and then once I let it grow on um, it, it kind of overpowers the spring onions but by then I pretty much harvested all of them so uh, works great I love interplanting and then finally just under this little netted frame right now but eventually 
under a low tunnel or a cold frame. I've got uh, spinach. This is my earliest spinach crop that I expect to still be with me over winter. That is interplanted with spring onions. And this one is interplanted with Japanese, Japanese type overwintering onions. So these will still, the onions will still be in the ground when the spinach has gone to seed in sort of early May. And then these will be harvested in early June. The onions will be harvested in early June. And just for completeness, this is my little flower border down here. Cherry tree, perennial kale plants. So this is a new one that I put a cutting that I planted this year. This is one that I planted two years ago. I did think I'd lost it actually which is why I planted the second one next to it. But it actually seems to have recovered really well. And uh, so I'm sort of just loath to take it out, although it is kind of overpowering that little pear tree. So I will take it out next year, but I'm tempted to just leave it in for another year. Plum tree, blackberries, apple tree, more blackberries, apple tree, and more perennial kale. And again, this is a new cutting that I uh, planted in March. So that is my plot. And uh, it's a lovely complement to Debbie's plot, which is almost all perennials. And I'll do you a tour of that later on in the month. And the kitchen garden, which is summer veg in summer, all summer veg. And it's almost all been harvested now and all turned over to winter veg. And uh, just like the allotment is just running a little bit further behind, as I say, this will all be replanted winter veg by middle of October. So I hope you like this quick video. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.